Matt, how are you today? All good, sir. We're uh, we're going to talk to you uh, today about your PFS numbers. I think uh, that probably exceeded expectations in the market, so that's really good news. But first, I got to talk to you about the Mexico thing. We caught, we caught up at the beginning of October. Uh, Claudia Scheinbaum nearly installed. I think what people are trying to work out is, is it more of the same or are we looking at something new? Look, I, I said I'm not going to re, re-echo what we talked about. It was around October 8th. Um, he left, did not damage mining, did not get rid of open pit mining. Uh, she came in. I will take, uh, I'll protect foreign investment. I want a lot more, but it's safe here. Uh, her government, she's appointed a very pro-business government, especially minister uh, of what we would call the economy, Marcelo Abroad. Uh, since then, the only real developments were about a week and a half or so ago, something very interesting. Um, the Americans, and they put it together, uh, top 250 CEOs from the states only, as it was driven by the American uh, uh, consulate, uh, met with her a lot in person in Mexico, the rest in uh uh, uh, online, uh, I have seen the presentation she made, and it was echoing the same, same, same strong message. We're different. I want foreign investment. What's here is safe. I want a lot more. It'll be safe. And, you know, proof is in the pudding. Uh, shortly after that, Amazon, who were there, announced $6 billion going directly into Mexico. Royal Caribbean, $2 billion. Uh, NVIDIA, who everybody loves, uh, a $10 million, uh, a billion dollar plant to be built in Mexico. And there were a bunch more. I didn't recognize all the companies, actually. Um, big, big capital. Uh, the trade in Mexico is on. We're foreign investors. Fantastic for us. We're hearing uh, the same thing. And this government, the last thing I'll say is, is I'll be very honest, in, in the six years of AMLO, there was not a lot of interaction between let's in particular say our group who have been there almost 27 years and uh, mining in Mexico, building big mines uh, and uh, any of the mining companies, but boy, it's totally different. You know, we're in Mexico city regularly. We're interacting with the government. They're very positive. They're pro mining. And uh, really to the point where we're being asked as long serving people in the mining industry in Mexico, bring a lot of benefit to actually sit on senatorial committees to give input on what's the future. So we couldn't be happier. I'll say the last thing. I knew it would be better. I said that. I didn't think it would be better this fast. I'll be very honest. And I was interviewed, I think it was Friday last week. I died like this. Uh, and I told them unequivocally on a question, will there be permits this year? And I went into a long ramble, as I sometimes do, uh, basically, uh, that I did not. Now, it wasn't self-serving because the government appointed October. Mexico was shut down early in December for Christmas. Uh, there, the whole government changes desks. They're looking for pencils and phones and computers. I said nothing until next year. That's what I said, no permits, because the permit is the re-rating. Um, I'm going to say in your little interview here for the first time, um, I think I was wrong. I don't say that a lot. I should more. Um, but uh, I think I was, and I would not be surprised if we see uh, maybe a pushback permit or an underground permit before Christmas. And that's what everybody's waiting for, Matt. I, I, I mean, you, you know, the syndicates we put together, I talked to all the investment banks. Um, we'll talk a little bit. I just got back from sitting with a lot. I want to talk about that later. A lot of the, uh, the, the, the gentlemen, actually, that are running some of the biggest solar producers in the world in New York City last week. And uh, everyone's saying the same thing. Toe in the water in Mexico. It's trading well. Everybody's up. When that first permit gets issued, the game is on. So please watch for that. Anybody out there listening on this thing, that's the important part. And remember, none of it, not a permit issued really, uh, since the administration before Amlo. That's a long time. He came in at 18. So uh, that's your next That's your next re-rating. That's your bell, whether you're watching for. So that's a little update from the last conversation. Okay, okay. So Mexico, positive mood. Um, you mentioned a lot of tech companies there. Not, not a lot of mining companies was there any mining participation in, in this discussion uh, i can tell you that the only mining executives uh who rated in the top 250 from the american side to be there uh, because a lot of canadian companies there no canadian companies were there it's an american driven thing we think the canadian thing is going to happen 
I'll, I'll update you on that in a little bit uh, after I know more. Uh, the only one was the president, the president of, uh, of Newmont. They have the largest mine uh, in Mexico. Uh, and uh, he was there. And I, I haven't talked to him what was said. I don't know. But uh, he sat at the table. And I'm sure he took positive vibes from that, too. Okay, we'll look out for that. Uh, let's talk about the PFS, right? Okay, yes. um, I've got to talk about the PFS in the context of either profit taking off the table because your stock was kind of, yeah, it's it's dropped a bit since the PFS came out. Was that profit taking or was that a case of people maybe not as delighted as, as uh, you had hoped? I can tell you as follows. Um, I would, I'm very, very, uh, institutionally held. People can go look at uh, who 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 are our, our absolute largest shareholders. And uh, look, you can look at them here on the screen. Uh, Steve Land, Franklin uh, Advisors, uh, Sprott Asset Management, Reese Renova, Peter Melitis uh, at, at Merck, uh, Joe Foster at uh, Van Eck. Joe was just on the mountain in May. First time he'd done a site visit to Mexico in 10 years. I was very happy to have him here. And people know uh, his pedigree. All of those people that you see there, a vast majority of them, I've had one-on-one -on -one conversations with. They're very, very happy. Uh, secondly, not that they matter as much, but they do matter in, in that basically um, the, I would say, institution, not the institutions, they're the institutions, the um, investment banks. We have large syndicates from BMO, Aid, Stiefel, uh, Desjardins, uh, Ventum, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I, of course, talked to them and their desks, very excited. They thought it was very positive. And the analyst reports we've put out, uh, we're covered by all of those. Uh, extremely uh, positive. Um, um, and some saying, you know, uh, such things as I don't want put out there right now. Uh, one of them, I think it was the SCP uh, analyst coverage was... Uh, the next target for acquisition in Mexico. I didn't like that. I don't like having a target on my back. I've got a lot of work to do to build this mine, but very, very positive. And this, I think, is something I can share. Um, I was in New York last week, small gathering of, of, of less than 10 uh, CEOs. There's not many silver, true silver companies in the world. Uh, and I can say that uh, was very happy, and producers, uh, was very happy as a developer to be invited. You had Core, you would have the First Majestics, you would have the IAs, all our peers. And we had, the, we had the, the, the opportunity to kind of present our companies to each other, basically, and have a, a full day in New York talking about this. Um, the feedback from those people, they're pretty smart. They're running, uh, they're running big either production or close to development projects. Um, uh, they thought we hit it off. They thought we hit it out of the chart. Back to the stock. Look, stock ran up, not on the PFS. We had that re-rating when that, you know, number 87, we're talking about open pits and mining in Mexico removed from the 100. Everybody doubled. I mean, let's look at it. Pretty close. Uh, huge moves. So, um, and looking at the way the stock traded, uh, I expected it would trade down 15, 20%. It's traded down a bit more than that. I think it's profit taking. And I don't know what it is. It must be this recipe people have. And everybody will tell you this, the institutional shareholders, the, the analysts, the bankers, um, anyone put a PFS out over the last year or so, anywhere, they've just been tortured afterwards when they, the, the results are off the chart. So we could not be happier with what we delivered. Um, we can't just wait to build this thing. And I think your viewers, when we go through some of the numbers, they're going to go, Wow. So let's see what happens. Okay. Well, look, I think, I think fair enough. If people should be taking money off the table. That's, that's the name of the game. We're going to make, make some money. Um, Absolutely. So all good. And I, and I think it also uh, shakes out the good stocks from the bad stocks. So, 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 so good news um, for your shareholders. Can we just talk about some of the numbers that you, you put out? Uh, you know, what, what are people looking at? What, what are they reacting to? Well, here, here's a chart. And I'm going gonna, I, I know I'm gonna to try to just explain this very quickly for folks uh, to look at. This is the magic. This is the magic sauce here. We put out a, a as you remember, an MRE first one last September, PEA in November, and in record speed here in October, we've gone to PFS. This is the document. And I think people need to know that. That in our opinion, we will build the open pit portion of the project on. So I'm going to talk about two things today. I got to tell you, this is done with a bow on it to build the pit. I want to then tell you what we're doing now next week to get a PEA out for the underground first half of next year. We'll come to that. This is the document we'll build on. Remember, 
21.50 and 26 are the prices we used in this PFS. They're a bit below spot today, Matt. So uh, I'm gonna talk about two numbers when I deliver this. I'm gonna talk about study number, and if we were in production today with this exact same asset, um, what those numbers would be. Everybody wants to know about the, and, and, and everybody has to also understand two things to start before I get into this is PEA to PFS. Everything's gonna come down. You go from 40 to 50% on either side of being right, the independent consultant, down to 20 or 25%. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're, you're sharpening the spear. Of course, things are gonna come down. We were very happy with how much ours came down. Last thing is, when we put the PEA out 53 million tons, a lot of that was inferred out tons. We moved some of those over. You can't include those in your PFS. People have to understand that. The next thing is Francisco Albales. I've told you about him. He's the guy from Argonaut. Everybody knows he's my COO now. I poached him a year and a half ago. He's got the keys. All of this that you're going to see and how we're going to build it, when we're going to build it, that's not me. That's him. And he built those two massive 100,000 ton per day uh, move, earth moving operations for Argonaut from 12 to random till 23, basically. Uh, built them, permitted them, and ran them. Um, he's the guy whose fingerprints are all over this. Last thing on that, you need to know before we talk about the numbers. So we put an MRE out, not just a PFS. So we actually took the tons from 53 million to over 60 million in the pit. Now, everybody would say, well, if you got more tons, why did your mine life go to 10? That's called the optimization exercise. When our independent consultants give us the pit shells, they give us 100 pit shells. Certainly, rest assured, I didn't pick which one we should build first. Francisco Alvarez did. I will never forget it because it was number 43 on that list. And so what that is, is what you're looking at here is only, is only 40 million of the over 60 million tons we have. That 40 million is the optimal thing to build first, and that's what gives you that 10-year mine life you see here on this chart. That We're not gonna throw those away. What will happen is as we get closer to the end, you'll basically drill more up, and there'll be a, an expansion or a pushback, and you'll go get those tons. But right now, all of this is only the first 40 million tons that we've already delineated in the MRA. That's why the shorter mine life of 10 years. That's the optimal pit to build first, optimization. First thing. So let's talk about the numbers. Okay. Um, NPV 222. This is all U.S. That's over 380 million at today's prices. IRR 40%. Today's prices, that's 60%. Payback, two years. Today's prices, 1.5 years. 318 million it makes over the 10 year mine life. After tax US, free cash flow. That is 540 at today's prices. People have to understand to look at the sensitivity tables. We have to come in, we're conservative. Here's what happens if the price goes down. We're still off the charts as far as being economic, but let's just talk pair apples to apples. Look, you saw those economics. You show me a project on this planet where we're gonna spend 86 million, and remember, that's with a 9.3 contingency. That's the 15%, the independent consultants say, you gotta add that on. We think we're gonna be any closer to the non-contingent number, but we'll see. Um, basically, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and you make a half of more than half a billion dollars over a decade after tax-free cash flow, go look at some of the big silver producing companies and see how much money they make. I, I know how much money they make because I watched a lot of them present to me in New York last week. I think that's an exercise people should do. Lastly on this, low cost. I mean, you're talking all in sustaining at 14 and 12, um, um, or, <coughs> or, 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 or excuse me, or 12 uh, um, uh, on the silver price. Five million ounces out of the gate. Five million ounces. That's just the pit, and that's only two thirds of the pit. The first phase of that pit gives you that for 10 years. Um, I have some great peers out there. I nothing but respect for them. Go look at how much I is producing right now. Look at the market cap. Um, Two million on the way to seven. I think people know that my next door neighbor is First Majestic. 
They just had narrow vein silver, beautiful project, short mind life left, five or six years. I think people recognize, I think, I know uh, that they did. Core just bought them for two billion. So, you know, these are my peers. They're doing nine million. So uh, the little pit ain't just a little pit. And remember the underground's to come. That's just a start. That being said, this is very important. Very, very important. And I'm just putting out the important things that people should look at. Um, now that we've looked at some of the numbers, what I wanted the team to do, and I'm gonna show you that in a minute, is we need to fund this. Okay, so at today's prices, I'm a 1.5, 1.6 payback, okay? Um, I wanna build this on the PFS. I think it's worth noting, Francisco built both of those pits for Argonaut on PEA, and they both came in ahead of the economics in the PEA. So I love to have that in the back of my mind. This is incredible because that starter pit has been drilled to proven. Because my funders, I'm gonna borrow the money, the work is already being done um, by some of those that may lend it, and I've told them I want that by the end of January, uh, a permit, subject, uh, a, a term sheet from them, subject, subject to me getting the permit. They'll hang their hat on that three years of proven um, uh, ounces and that payback. So that was very important also. I do wanna show you something. Um, why I think people have to understand why this pit mat is so so um, economic and and for a low capex you make so much money it comes down to a couple things first of all that's the two and a half kilometers of the pit 150 meter benches uh, 300 meters you can see the entire pit there overall pit 1.7 to 1 strip over that 10 years that's incredible those pits I told you Francisco built for Argonaut Five to one. People know what that means. You move 1.7 tons of ore, uh, of, 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 of rock, and you get a ton of ore. Um, the grade, very, very good overall, approaching 0.45. Um, so that's fantastic. But really what this mountain was just gave us such an advantage is that starter pit I talked about. If you can see here on the screen, this is the first three years, 12 million, 13 million of the tons, three, that's your starter pit. And, and, and the mountain just did such a favor for us here. This, this is all air. And, and you could really see that if you basically re, re, rotate this. Um, the mountain, you're on the side of a hill. So why is that so important? Well, that's so important because there's zero strip. It's 0 0.3 to 1. And the grade is, you know, overall 0 0.6. That's a high-grade pit in Mexico. Um, those those two pits that Francisco basically built, which were so profitable for Argonaut with 0.25 and 0.35, these are gold equivalent we're using here, so comparing apples to apples. And the most important thing is for my lenders, look at all that red in the starter pit. That's that first three years of proven resource the lender can hang his hat on with that at 21.50 and 26, a two year payback, at spot prices today, 1.5. And then you're just free cash flowing after that. Um, so that's that's really the the pit. I mean, I'm gonna show you a little cartoon I think is important. I'll stop right after that for some questions because there is one more thing I wanna talk about. We're not sitting on our hands. We're just keeping going. Um, but let me go back and find uh, this little cartoon. It's such a, such a great little cartoon uh, of what El Tigre is. As you'll see at the top, the yellow, um, that's the big stock work zone. The vein up the middle, that's the high grade silver vein that basically the old timers led us to this with that big mine that created 100 million silver equivalent ounces and two and a half kilos in 20 years ending in 1930, the Americans. Um, this is done. PFS, done with a bow on it. No more drilling, no more work. Get the amendment. Remember, I have a current permit for the 800 ton per day underground. Everything was filed by Francisco Alvarez, the MIA, over a year ago. It's gone through the system. No questions, no problems. AMLO just didn't give any permits. So we weren't getting one. Now, new government, everything we're seeing, permits are coming. Let's leave that alone for now. I need an amendment to my current permit. Can't mine it until then. Let's say that's going to be making a date up first half of next year. I'm just being conservative. That's a done deal. Before I go on to tell you what's next with this nice slide that's on the screen, because we're back drilling now. I think you're gonna like that. 
any questions on the PFS that I can answer first? That I'm pretty well done with the update. Well, no, I think no, the, P, like the, number, the numbers are there. I guess the thing that people are looking to is saying, right, we're going to build off the PFS. The cert that you're saying, obviously, you've got the team who've done that and more previously. It gives you, lends you the comfort. The geology lends you the comfort uh, as a way to do that. But most people will be looking to that and going, is, is that wise? If the investors are comfortable with that, I guess, it's like the, the, the funders are comfortable with that, then the investors should be comfortable with that. Is that that's what absolutely. you're saying? Yes. Right. Okay. So we'll, 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 we'll tick that box and say that that's absolutely fine. The next thing is, and it's something you mentioned earlier. Let me imagine to... saying, when I say the lenders will be comfortable, I just went across, the my peers on the corporate side think it's fantastic. The institutional investors, which gave me the $100 million dollars, in bot deal financing, straight up common shares during AMLO at the very bottom and said, proceed. They're very happy. Analysts are happy. Eh, investment bankers don't matter. They're always happy. They're just always looking for a deal. But everyone's happy and the lenders will end up giving us term sheets next year. So yes, they're happy to. Right. Okay. And I, and I say this bit in the context of some of the m a that we talked about last time, obviously, you know, Silver, Silvercrest, et cetera. Um, there's some big numbers being mentioned there. So the, I think the one of the things that I, I guess the market's looking to is maybe the speed at which companies move. You're delivering that message to me now and saying, well, actually, we can move through the phases quite quickly and maybe take advantage of that acquisitive marketplace at, at, the, at the moment. So talk to me pre precisely about this kind of permitting process, which you expect to sort of see potentially this side of Christmas and what that then means or what that lays out uh, for you for next year in terms of getting after the money. So I'm going to lay out the whole timeline of what the next, people like to know what the next year holds for us. I'm going to tell you what I think. I got to, I'm going to have to forward look on a statement a little bit uh, to pick a date when I would get a permit for the open pit, but we'll do that. But this is very important here. This is the build that's in the study, okay? Now, that's the build that we published, time, 18 months. Very fast for a mine from start to finish, to have the kind of cash flow that we talked about, about 50, 60 million USD free cash flow a year after a minimal cap expense. Um, I can tell you that we think that that will be much shorter. Um, this is a very conservative time frame. Remember, our independent consultants have to sign off on the plan. And they've got to have wiggle room on each side because it's still PFS. We think, and let's just say, could we do it in 12 months? Possibly. Do we think it'll be this? No. So uh, quicker to production. So I'm going to use the magic number of 12 months. That's aggressive, but I have to use that for my timeline. Let's go back to this cartoon. Stock work, you saw it, that's the pit. All that vein went through that beautiful plumbing and you saw the economics it drives. Dig it up, very simple mining, put it on a, crush it, uh, take the trucks, blast it, haul it at three eighth uh, uh, to the crusher, three eighth, no agglomeration, put it on the heat leach, hit it with the, the, the cyanide and boom, out comes in 90 days, 85% of your gold and 45 to 50% of your silver. It's simple as far as money goes. Let's just say that I get my permit. I'm making this date up. March 2025. Okay, now we got a starting point. Let's just say the bankers do love it and they do outdo what I ask and they give me the, the term sheets for the debt in January of 2025. So we go to work, aggressive timing, but I'm just doing it for illustration purposes. It takes us 12 months to build it. So by April, aggressive, 2026, we're in production with that kind of cash flow that you see in the, st in the study. And at today's uh, spot prices, very, very profitable. Compare us to some of the other silver companies that have their valuations. I'm leaving that to people do their own work. I'm not going to talk about my fears. I have nothing okay. but respect. Okay. That well, said, go ahead. No, I'm going to say, okay, so it's, it's quick. And, and whatever the ramp-up period is to, to name plate, sure. et cetera. Um, quick. But the point, the point is, even if I'm a little bit more conservative and say by the end of 2026, and we're sort of at the end of 2024 now, you are inserting yourself ahead of many others by taking this approach um, do you expect to kind of get down to the, I know you said at the right of this asset, you said you don't want to be talked about in the context of takeout, but 
that's always going to be there, especially in the market we see. Um, do you sort of see a kind of very acquisitive consolidation uh, process in Mexico more broadly? You know, I th- if you'd ask me this during AMLO, I think like investors were not coming to Mexico. Uh, the sentiment we were beat down beyond where anyone should have ever been beat down. And we're still trying to recover from that. And we are. Uh, uh, nobody came to Mexico to buy anything. Um, uh, shortly after, like days after she became president, we had the, we had, we had the Coor deal. Uh, shortly after that, or maybe it was just before, we had the Gatos deal to First Majestic. Do I think that's the end of them? Absolutely not. And I'm saying that maybe... Uh, uh, not just logically, just because of, you know, you hear the banter and the chit chat. That being said, um, we, he, uh, for us, and let's talk about us, um, we're not for sale. Uh, uh, we are going to re-rate when permits come. We're going to be back drilling coming with the next next, which is the big blue sky, which is the big future outside of remembering this is done. This is ready to build. Now, the long, that's 10 years. It'll, it'll be a pushback, maybe an expansion of that. There's a few pits to the north we think will come into play as we drill them in the next 5, 10 years. But the underground is the 10, 20 to 30 year mine life asset that everybody's looking for. But what this is, is if this was just the pit I've circled, that's a wonderful bolt on for anyone to make 50 million USD for a decade, full stop. Leaving that alone, the underground is the big picture. Re-rate on getting back underground drilling. We're going to talk about that in a minute. PEA for the underground first half of next year. Permitted for that. Already had the 800 ton per day mill on on the mountain. Um, That's going to go fast. And uh, the permit's coming for everybody. And then we're going to get our permit. And uh, I can guess what those re-ratings are going to be, but that's going to put me in a position where I can say, okay, uh, I think my value is to the point now where if someone uh, does want to look at it, I'd have the conversation. I'm not having any conversations right now with anybody, even if they did show up. And I'm not in any way saying they have. I'm just saying, I'm like I said, I did not like when the analyst put a target on my back last week. This is a prime acquisition target. I, I don't want a target right now. I got work to do. So what's the work? Okay, if that's fair answer, Matt, you need anything to follow up? That's good. That's good. Okay. Right so, right PFS, done. Can't build it. Got to wait for my permit amendment. What do we do? Um, we immediately go back to work. Uh, and we're back to work. I got to remind people, remember, quiet, while we did all this pit, we developed underground, uh, spent a lot of money. And uh, that wasn't just because I wanted to have a pretty mind like you see on the screen. Um, to show pictures of. Uh, that's your, going to be the commercial uh, haulage way for the old mine. We've gone in a half kilometer now. Really, um, what that is, and, and you can see what we did, the old timers left us a beautiful opening, which was very safe. 100 years later, we slashed it out to 5.5 by 5.5. That means we bring in community, one of the biggest uh, uh, underground developers, and we just blast it. Uh, and you end up with this. Beautiful. Five and a half by five and a half. That, that's that's going to be, there's going to be a lot of ore in time come out of that. But right now I'm going in there with a big drill rig and that drill rig is already in there. Uh, and I'm going to show you what's the next next and going back to that cartoon always. So what I said is there's that opening. We walk right here. No more 600 meter holes. The holes into the shale, which you remember. Listen, on the base of just those drill results, okay? And that's not what these are for. Everything I'm going to drill here starting next week is so that I can deliver a PEA H1 of 2025, matching up to the 800 ton per day permit I have and the mill I already have in the mountain. So what's that gonna mean? Drill's gonna be right here. We're gonna be drilling 25 meter holes to shale, always drilling those high grade veins. And I can't wait to drill more into this big sulfide zone. People didn't pay attention to that, it was Mexico. This was a massive new discovery. We've only seen these two types of mineralization on this screen. Big stock work, PFS on it. Narrow under vein, the ground veins, uh, uh, like you have at Silvercrest, one, two, three. We've drilled up 86 kilos, what the old timers took. We then found a shale zone. I've talked to you about that. 
Beautiful 10, 20 meter blowouts around epigenetic to the silver veins of, of precious metals mineralization. This one's interesting. I, I, we, we didn't get enough for this because the, we were at the very bottom when we discovered it. I'm going to show somebody. I, I think people have to keep an eye on what this could be because this is something we've never seen in Mexico. And, you know, we've been we've been there, you know, a long, a long, long, a long, long time. And <clears throat> excuse me, um, we started drilling this thing. 600 meter holes, we got 30, 40 meter holes. It was when we stopped to go back and do the 50,000 meters to finish the pit a year or more ago. This was already 750 meters by 350 by 30, 40 meters wide, averaging 600 to 700 grams. The core of that, those, those wide, and the first intercept was 40 meters of a, a kilo. This is a massive sulfide. We've not seen anything like it in Mexico. It's open both ways. So rest assured, what's next? This drill is going to start coming with vein, shale, and wide, massive sulfide results imminently. Uh, my goal is to have them out in November. Stay tuned if we can do that. The drills are ready to turn. For me, it's only for the PEA. But I, I think people have to understand that we had 100 million silver equivalent ounces in that pit. We already delivered 100 million silver equivalent ounces in the underground. The old timers, this is just around the mine, three or four kilometers. You got 25 kilometers of this. 100 million silver equivalent ounces, the old timers took two and a half kilos. And anyone who's paying attention should have looked at this in the PFS. They should have looked at our independence. It's not me. The independence said, just there's the old mine. There's a the couple of kilometers. We go for 10 kilometers each way. That's the blue sky. Just drill here, drill here, drill here, tighten up the drilling here and here. And there's another 100 million silver equivalent ounces just for the taking. That's not me saying that. Now we're up to what? Add it all up. 400 million silver equivalent ounces? When are people going to start to see the potential? Of, go find more than that. I don't talk about that enough because maybe sometimes I get too focused. Pit, done. Well, we're back to that underground and we're going to have some great results. I had a market cap in the worst of times in Mexico with AMLO, 230 million market cap before he really beat us down and said, oh, bits were going away just on the basis of drill results. No MREs, no PAs, no PFSs. So I think this is going to be fun for everybody. Last thing I want to do is you want the time frame, Matt, correct? Here's the time frame. Um, we're going to basically, PFS is done. I already told you if we have a, if, in, in my magic world, we're looking, March, I get my permit amendment. And then summer of 2026, let's call it, uh, or later or earlier, uh, I'm free cash flowing 50 million USD at today's prices. What am I going to do with it? Well, that builds the underground. It's always been the plan. It's never changed. Um, AMLO, he didn't, he, just, he didn't slow us down. I raised over 100 million bucks during his administration for the company. We did. The team did. Um, we got to the point where we're ready to build now. He just, we knew he wasn't going to give a permit. And the other thing, we raised it at way less valuations than we should have. Those are the cards you're dealt. You, you don't stop. A lot of companies stopped. And they're starting to go again and start to drill their first drill, drill holes. And, and they're, you know, forget an MRE and a PEA. I'm ready for what's here now. Probably the best silver market we've seen in our careers. We'll see. And we think it's going to be long term. That's another story. So what happens? I get a PEA out. H1 of next year for the underground. That's no good for to me. I got to keep going. Once this drill rig starts here, there'll be another one and another one, and we're just going to drill underground, keep adding ounces, but I need to take that PEA. And let's say I got a little time. By summer of 2026, by the time I get this in production, free cash flowing, I got to have a PFS done. I think we'll build on PFS because we'll hopefully self-fund in my plan. The build will not be that's build on that put that 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 under 800 ton per day will be less than 40 million usd into in, to build it put in production the underground development will be expensive but i'm going to try to get some more underground development like this done over the next couple of years then i show up with a pfs in the summer of 2026 and we build this underground let's say that's another year uh, summer of 2027, I'm making numbers up as I go here. People don't come back and say, you said summer of 2027. This is my time frame. We bolt on to the 5 million silver equivalent ounces we're making today. Another 3 to 4 million. That's a guesstimate uh, of high-grade underground silver ounces. And uh, 
you wake up to be a pretty substantial uh, mining company in, in Mexico. Knowing, I mean, I've already dr drilled off enough ore, Matt. People don't realize that. 11 million tons underground with just a little drilling just around the old mine. In the 800 ton per day mill, that's a 31-year mine life. <laughs> and we're going to add more. So you can expect that 800 tons will increase. I don't know. This is what happens in Mexico. You go look at all the big mines that are now 3,000 tons per day. The vast majority went like that. Because in the beginning, you got to get your development out in front of you. You do not want a hungry mill. We've seen people recently um, have that trouble in Mexico when you're just going after an airway. And plus, we've got some some bulk tonnage there. So look, that, that that's the plan. Like, I just laid it out. But Matt, that's always been the plan. Now, AMLO made me kind of look, and I'm sure 99% of your viewers came and said, look, this Justin guy seems like a nice guy from Canada, but like, did he hit his head? He's been talking for three years about an open pit mine in Mexico. Like, AMLO already canceled them, right? Like, what's wrong with him? Well, this has always been the plan. It's always the way we've done it. You've got to have that big, easy stock work zone, low CapEx, drive the money, and then use that to go underground because underground is, when you just have narrow vein, luckily we've got shale and sulfide, make it easier, but it's still really, really hard and it's really, really expensive. So we never, look, step one is the pit, two is the underground. I think the underground is going to come at us a lot faster than people think. We've, we've done, like when I say PEA next year, you know, when we were just working on the pit, we did all, uh, to get that PFS out, we did a lot of bench work on that PEA. Metallurgy's done. Uh, like, we've got enough drilled now. I just want better drilling and more inferred, so indicated from inferred. So that's what this drill is going to do for us in the next year. You know, I could almost drop that PEA now. It's just not ready yet, but it'll be ready first half of next year, or maybe sooner than first half. We'll see. Well, there, there you go. Whirlwind. And it's a nice time to remind you of what the, the model is at the end there in terms of getting that cash flowing soon uh, to fund the kind of big prize and the, and the, and the growth potential, I say, the life of mine extending significantly. Glenn, I appreciate your time today. Very thorough. We'll see you soon. Matt, I know we usually have an interaction where it's question and answer. We'll do that on the next one. I, I just wanted people to have a... You know, it's been a while, a full update. Now that they may be actually believing that I might get a permit um, to, to look at what has always been the business plan. Um, so, you know, let's let's see if we can roll this out. It'll be very exciting. And, and people can go look at, you can see what the production profile will be, very profitable. I just want to challenge your viewers. Go look at, and this is the last thing I want to say, go look at the valuations of my peers, okay? My peers not a first majestic. You know who my peers are. They're in this production profile, silver only. Um, and and the last thing I say, there's been something very, and we've we've been in this game a long time, and we talk about this. The price is at, is off the charts for gold and silver. There are some explorers getting rewarded, but you would expect explorers drilling their first holes right now would be off the charts on value. They're not. I can't explain that. There's a few. The second thing is development companies are in that same box. When you look at some of the best development companies on the verge of getting a permanent building the next mine, they're they're getting they're they're not getting the valuation. The valuation is for those that are getting to production and they're alpha. So I, I think that you know that's always been our plan and really the way the world looks like now. These are the companies that people, if they want an alpha return, you got to wait a little longer. But I think that's, and I, that's not just me and self-serving. We see that across the board. And I don't know if you're seeing any of that, Matt. Yeah, we, no, absolutely. I think this is a fundamental change in um, business plan, business model over the past three years, because you got to do what you, what you, what you needed to do to kind of stay at the table, stay alive, um, be able to kind of um, take it off advantage of opportunities like these markets now for, for silver. So yeah, those who can do, uh, those who can't are perhaps going to hope to be taken out, are going to hope that the money does cascade down through the sector uh, and then they can they can access some of that. But uh, f for you, you don't have to worry about that. Hope's not a business plan. So look, thank you so much, Matt. I really appreciate this. It was a great catch up and great to see you. And listen, uh, we're getting busy too. I mean, uh, this fall is, you know, it, it, I, I kind of, I didn't go dark. It's not the right thing, but really the last year with AMLO and, and all the uncertainty in the summer, we had to get, we had to wait till AMLO went and 
did what I thought he would do and not get rid of open pit mining. So we're now uh, we're 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 bang on with uh, with uh, it's time to tell the tiger story all over the world. You know we were uh, we were Beaver Creek, Denver, New York last week. I'm, we're back to New York. We're in New Orleans. I'm on the way to Dubai. I'll be in London. See you at Mines and Money. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna be hearing a lot. Uh, the world's gonna be hearing a lot about what we think is the next great silver mine to come into production. So it's it's really time to get going. So uh, um, hopefully for the long-standing shareholders that have uh, that have stuck with me, even when most thought I was crazy, um, I think our time is very very close to make a good alpha return here. So I just want to thank all your folks for the. This takes these take a decade. Eight. We've been seven eight years at this. It's. There's no, I drill my first hole and someone's going to take me out. And no, it's drill only to deliver MREs, PAs, PAs, PFSs, and then build a mine. That's the alpha return. That's, I mean, it takes a long time. We're a slow moving beast, but uh, we always do what we say and I hope we continue to.